On Saturday nights in West Texas, all roads lead to Lubbock, home of Texas Tech University. How did they do it? The answer is in the mind of Mike Leach. For 10 long years, Texas Tech University has tried to cover up key details surrounding the firing of the winningest football coach in Red Raider history. The man 60 Minutes once called the mad scientist of football. Coach Mike Leach has fought ever since his firing to get to the truth. They don't respect the public. Uh, they don't they think that uh, they're above the public and that they are allowed to have secrets from the public. Now, for the first time, you'll see what Texas Tech University has been hiding, some of the secret emails. The university documents that we now know were changed, the evidence of coercion, and the efforts to lie, yes, I said lie, to the courts. Our Texas Tech coach, Mike Leach, has been fired. And the real reason Mike Leach was fired breaking news that could set the stage for an expensive federal civil rights lawsuit by the coach. I steadfastly refuse to deal in any lies and am disappointed that I have not been afforded the opportunity to make the truth known. That was a defiant Coach Leach on December 30th, 2009, the day Tech announced his firing. We maintain that when, when Texas Tech signed their contract with Mike, they never had any intention of honoring it. An email from former Regents Chairman Jim Sal to the school chancellor may have telegraphed the orchestrated ouster to come. It was sent a full year before Leach was fired. Quoting, I feel you should sign a contract that would not cost us too much to fire him. Texas Tech's decision to deal in lies and fabricate a story which led to my firing includes but is not limited to the animosity remaining from last year's contract negotiation. Mike Leach fought back after player Adam James and his football analyst father complained the coach had mistreated the player. James said he was put in a small, dark equipment shed as punishment after complaining of a concussion. This email is marked confidential. Tech has kept the tale secret for 10 long years, but we now know what it says. Region Vice Chairman Jerry Turner directing school officials how to use Regent rules to punish Leach. Curiously, most of the Regents were left off the email chain. At this point, not a single member of the Texas Tech football staff had even been interviewed about the Adam James allegations. And James, he had just been interviewed for the first time the night before. By that morning, ESPN had already been tipped off that an investigation had started just the night before. Here's another document Tech has refused to make public. A draft letter to Mike Leach, dated December 28, 2009, that made his punishment not a firing, but a private reprimand, a fine of $60,000. No apology required. There's no evidence that letter was ever finalized and sent, and Leach instead was suspended that same day. Take a look at this line in the letter from then Athletics Director Gerald Myers, quoting, This concludes the inquiry into the allegations made by Adam James and his parents. The Leach investigation was already over. Mike Leach wanted to coach the team in the Alamo Bowl after another big winning season. And on the local news that night in Lubbock, Leach and his lawyer announced a planned legal fight to make sure that happened. This email from Chancellor Kent Hans was sent after 11 o'clock that night. Tech has tried to hide it. Quoting, if we fire him, he is no longer an employee and therefore can't coach the team. We can fire him before or after a temporary restraining order, can't we? The Tech employee handling the investigation was Charlotte Bingham. She must have realized the planned retaliation could be a problem. Quoting, you may be restrained from doing that. Tech fired Mike Leach anyway before the planned court hearing. But there's something else in this email chain that exposes Tech to potentially more trouble. Hans, quoting, we need a timeline of the facts and series of events. Chancellor Kent Hans was ready to fire Mike Leach without ever seeing a report of what the witnesses even had said. Bingham responds, quote, I can do a timeline right now for you. 
Regent Nancy Neal pleaded with Regent Turner. Doctor's letter really hurts us, she wrote. Said it may have helped him to do what was ordered. Quoting, I am pleading that the course we're on wait until Monday after game. If we owe them money, let's not be so cheap that it isn't paid. In 2018, nine years after Mike Leach was fired, Dolce Vino Consulting filed a lawsuit against Texas Tech to see the Leach report. Remember, Tech denied there was a completed Leach investigation. Quoting, TTU does not have a completed investigative report regarding the mistreatment of Adam James. The completion of the report was interrupted by the litigation ensuing upon Coach Leach's termination. We had filed a lawsuit in part to prove that wasn't true. The Texas Attorney General's office even told State District Judge Bill Souter the same story. Souter was suspicious, even accused the AG of playing word games. But now we know the AG's office wasn't telling the truth. And here's the proof. On December 31st, 2009, the chief of staff to the school president, Grace Hernandez, sent Chancellor Hans an email entitled Leach Report. Two hours later, Charlotte Bingham added some final statements, quoting, I think it's done. No other changes were ever made to that Leach Report. What does the word done mean to you? The final report, dated December 31st, 2009, says, quote, Coach Leach approved of the placement of Adam in the shed. Those words were absent from all the previous drafts of the report. But now Tech had fired Mike Leach, apparently in retaliation for his planned legal fight. Maybe they thought it would help to add it. Now you know why Mike Leach has fought ever since for the $2.5 million in contract money he was cheated of. After the firing, donors were furious. One donor even returned basketball tickets he had been given from the school president, calling the Leach dismissal non-professional and embarrassing. Wonder what all those donors will think now. These actions taken by Texas Tech have severely damaged my reputation and public image. In addition, Texas Tech has caused harm to not only my family, but the entire Red Raider Nation and all of college football. The lawsuit against Texas Tech is now in Judge John Board's court in Canyon, Texas, a town 30 minutes south of Amarillo. In court this month, Judge Board refused to allow Dolcefino consulting lawyers to even get Texas Tech officials under oath after two years of trying to get the truth. We've accused the State University of failing to even bother to look for records we requested. You'll love this. Judge Board even suggested to our lawyers that the only place under Texas law to complain is the local district attorney. That's a joke. When we learned Tech destroyed some leech records, we filed a complaint with the Lubbock District Attorney Sunshine Stanick. She refused to investigate. Part of the hometown cooking, I suspect, that has made it so hard to expose the lies and the cover-up. We even filed a criminal complaint with Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. That went nowhere, too. Tech has tried to charge Dolce Vino Consulting more than $450,000 just to look at records they may never really end up giving us. We complained to the Texas Attorney General. Another joke. The Texas Attorney General actually represents Texas Tech in the lawsuit. Judge Board knows that. As a result, Dolce Fino Consulting has now added Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton as a defendant in our two-year-old legal fight, arguing his conflict of interest makes the whole process unconstitutional. The Red Raider Nation is closer to the truth, and these new documents make you realize why they may be fighting so hard to keep all the truth a secret.